Hello everyone, Dan here from Sherp ET. This is part two of the Sherp tire repair. Uh, you'll see us do some little bit of caulking here and some patching. So what we're doing right now is we're filling in, putting, using that caulk, whatever kind that is, uh, black gasket maker, and then we're going around the outside of the bead. And then the tire squishes against that caulk, and then we put a ring around the outside of it, and it gets pushed out. Okay. Are you ready? So this is kind of a pain. So the, the, the goal is is to put half a tube of that caulk per side on the tire. In reality, when I did it before, I used almost three quarters of a tube. Uh, Julie, when she was doing this, basically did the same. I found that putting those two by fours underneath it really, really helps. Instead of trying to hold that damn tire up in the air, it's just an awkward position because that tire is so long uh, between the outside of the tire and the inside of the rim. You're bent over. You can see that in a, in a position that's just absolutely a pain in the back, shall we say. And then once you get all that done, uh, move those boards over a little bit. Hold it up there. Give it another squirt of caulk. Bloop, bloop, bloop. And then we put it down. And then we next step we're going to do is we're going to put that ring around the outside of it. And then tighten up them bolts. Again, one bolt to the next, one after another. You can't do it crisscross like you do on a normal tire. You'll never get that damn ring on. That ring is a pain in the ass to get on um, because the bolts just do not line up perfectly. So we got her on. Hopefully she doesn't leak. Julie's working on this rim right now. What there is, is there's a whole bunch of poop that's on there you gotta knock off. Then we take that tire right there and we put it on here. 
And then we took the tire that was on the front and put that to the back and then that will go on the back and hopefully we're not going to have any seal issues with that one. Take some RTV here for the common folk, silicone clock, and then we we'll go around this shoe. Do you have to do that? I don't know. I didn't do it last time, but better safe than Getting this tire on is a lot easier than what it looks. It's just thinking about it and putting things in the appropriate place instead of trying to manhandle it. That is the only way that I think you could get this on unless you were super mad. In this case, the two by four is where the trick. I just had to get it up a little bit, just make sure that uh, the bolts are lined out. And after all that was done, it went on really, really easy. Even this really isn't that physically demanding. Just have to put all the lug bolts back on again, put the gas tank back in, or excuse me, the fuel tank back in again. Before you do that, you have to take off that rim. On the outside, make sure you don't break the bead, put that back on again, and you are back in business. Oh, how many, uh, how tight do those bolts have to be? Well, what we did is just basically use that torque wrench to snug them down, and then we took a great big, uh, pipe, put it on the end of a wrench, and then about one Julie, about one Julie pushing down on those seemed to tighten them up sufficiently. So reality, those lug nuts are supposed to be torqued down to 300 foot-pounds. I do not have a torque wrench that goes that high, but... So we pulled the rim off again. Why did we put that rim back on there? Just to make sure that we wouldn't break that bead when we transferred that tire back onto the hub. Um, and the fuel tank that goes on the inside, there's two rubber gaskets on it that go in. They're not really functioning as gaskets, they're just kind of hoping, make, keeping that whole thing there so it doesn't wiggle around. Um, some crap still does get behind there, but really not that much. Reality is not that much. Those gaskets are a pain in the ass to kind of get lined up, but once you do, things go fairly smoothly. Again, you have to do one of those bolts at a time. Do one, then the next one, the next one, the next one, uh, until you get all the way around. Uh, it's just a challenge to get those things aligned. So sometimes it worked when we put them on, we tighten them all down all the way around that they were all lined up. Other times it did not. Just had to play and get it in the right spot. But eventually we did get her done. And after that, again, we torque it down. Uh, 30 foot-pounds of pressure goes on that. See that right there? So this right here is where I plug the tire. So it's really not that big of a rip. But a rip is a rip. The question is, is whether I want to take this thing completely out. We'll try to make it flush. I lean towards make it flush. Sorry about the camera placement here. I'm actually sitting on the inside of the tire and it was extremely difficult to get a good angle. 
you could see those little ridges there on the inside of the tire. What I eventually did is I took a right angle grinder and I just ground off those little ridges and I tried to make it as smooth as possible. Then in the end, we just cleaned it up really good with some acetone, put some rubber cement type stuff over the top of it, let it uh, dry, put another coat of rubber cement on, and then just put it on a traditional patch. On the inside one here, the patch that we put on actually had a metal rod that stuck through it. You stuck that metal rod through the hole so that would align the patch. We put that on. Um, again, it's not really a good uh, video of that, but I did as best I could. You'll get to see the end here kind of going through. What I was cutting off there is actually the uh, tire repair kit that we did out in the field. So you can see, hopefully right there, what we got to do is get this sucker nice and flush so we can get a patch on the inside. So I'm going to try to use a right angle grinder for that. We'll see how it works here. Oop. doing here is taking that patch that I was talking about with that rod through it and sticking it through on the outside just to make sure that that hole is lined up. It was difficult to be able to see that from the inside so I poked it through from the outside so I got a hole all lined up in preparation for poking it back through from the inside. Okay, we're installing the patch. I don't know how well I'm going to be able to show you this, but I'm going to stick, there's a small hole there that I know is there. I'm going to stick that in, then I'll show you in a second here. Okay, we got one off. So just finished up the project by filling up everything with air. All seemed to hold. All was good. Took those blocks out in the bottom, and we were off and running. Just want to thank everybody for watching and subscribing. I really appreciate it. Uh, please hit that like button if you do, in fact, okay, like the video. Throw some comments out there. Happy to answer any questions. Oh, okay. Have yourself okay. a great day. Then Take pull. care. Bye-bye. Okay. So we got the patch on. Now I'm going to use that whirly do. Try to rub it as best we can. So after we rub the Dickens out of it, that little rod is sticking out there in the end. Sorry we didn't capture that, but essentially we just put a vice grip on the end of it and yanked it out and it worked out just fine. So we got that one patch installed on the outside and we also put one on the inside. Sorry, this is kind of out of order, but it was actually in order. Uh, when we put this next tire on, I didn't want to bore you with showing all of them, but I just wanted to show you what it looks like when we caulk that inside rim. So we finished up the project by airing up all the tires. Everything seemed to hold perfectly. Can't wait to go out there and try it. Look at that brand new tire from that shirt trailer. Can't wait to use it. It's going to be a blast. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Greatly appreciate it. If you have any comments, throw them out there. I'll do my best to answer them. Have a great day and a good one. Toodaloo.